Good morning and welcome to the faith community of St. Maria Goretti and Our Lady of the Angels Parishes. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Brother John. Please stand for our gathering procession. Good morning. We return to God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord's peace be with you. We continue our Lenten journey and today in the gospel we hear of, of the transfiguration. And uh, Peter says, it's good for us to be here. Hopefully we feel that same way as we gather this morning. And we ask for the Lord to, to guide us, to guide us into that Lenten journey and ask for, for the mercy and strength and peace that we most need. Lord Jesus, we seek your grace and your mercy as we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. 
Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led, up a, led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. 
let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, <clears throat> casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they'd seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Last Sunday, for the first Sunday of Lent, of course, we always go into the desert and kind of begin our journey and the invitation to, with Jesus, to enter more deeply into that relationship with God, into our hearts, and seeing how we can, uh, uh, looking to 40 days, how we can improve that relationship and also grow in that relationship with one another, with all people. On the second Sunday of Lent, we always have the Transfiguration. And uh, an account from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in this case it's Mark, about Jesus being transfigured before three of his closest disciples and showing them his glory. And not only the glory, but also the having Moses and Elijah with him, they're conversing and leading them both to be terrified, but also for Peter to say, it's good for us to be here, let's build some tents and stay here. We really didn't know what he was saying, as, as, as the scriptures say. and. We realize that you know Jesus is transfigured, and it's important to realize why he transfigures uh, and shows his glory. And that is, just before this, he revealed to them that he was going to have to suffer and die. And he's transfigured so that they see really who he is. But we realize that not a whole lot is computed with them. Uh, first of all, the, the idea of dying and rising uh, didn't compute. And because they were still seeing him as the Messiah, which he is and was, but also as the Messiah who was going to overthrow Rome, establish the Israelites in, in their position as a nation and a worldly kingdom. And they were uh, convinced that that was what the Messiah was going to bring about. And so they were focusing on that. So what they were focusing on was Jesus uh, curing people, casting out demons, having these huge crowds, feeding uh, thousands with a few uh, loaves of bread and a couple of fish. And he says, I'm going to suffer and die. I'm going to rise, but I'm going to suffer and die. And that just didn't compute with them. As if he's really the leader and going to unite the people, overthrow Rome, he needs to be living. And so when he transfigures, we see him showing his glory and helping them to see with the law and the prophets, Moses and Elijah, that he has this purpose, the purpose in his calling as the Messiah and also as the Son of God to offer his life back to the Father for all of us, for our salvation. And so the kingdom he's talking about, the kingdom of God is at hand, is not a kingdom of God at hand in a worldly kingdom, but the kingdom of God at hand is the kingdom of God and the, the values, the power and love of God, the unselfish love that he extends to us, and in his passion, death, and resurrection brings that about for us, brings us the salvation that is promised so we in turn can receive his spirit, which we do in baptism, and we can become what the Father proclaimed Jesus to be. This is my beloved son, listen to him. And he says to us, this is my beloved son and daughter. Not necessarily listening to us, but hopefully people do listen to us because we're trying to follow Christ. We're trying to be the body of Christ and in turn then show the face of Christ by our lives. And so that people can really, uh, that God can say about us, you're my beloved son or daughter. And be able to, to ask us to show that presence and that, that love. And you know, Jesus you know, shows that and, and gives us the power to be his beloved sons and daughters. And to live that in our relationship with one another. At first reading, often seems a little bit, uh, you know, uh, one you have to kind of ponder a bit, because here's uh, Abraham, 
And Abraham was promised he'd be a father of a great nation. And he's really advanced age. And of course he has a son finally. As a promise, the, the fulfillment of that promise to be a, 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 the beginning of a great nation with Isaac. But then he's asked to, to sacrifice Isaac. And we realize that we're not, uh, the, the scriptures aren't trying to justify any kind of uh, a child sacrifice. But rather, uh, Isaac becomes a symbol of Christ. And that, that whole sense, he, even though the author, uh, Moses generally considered the author, is not, um, uh, he's not really trying to say he knows Christ. But when we look at Isaac, and a piece that's missing in this particular passage, we go from Isaac be, or Abraham being asked to sacrifice his, his son, the son of the promise. He, uh, they go to uh, Moriah, an area in the mountain, but it says, it kind of skips over to, now he's getting ready to sacrifice him. In between that, Isaac, Abraham has Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice. Sound familiar? Carrying the cross? And Isaac, carrying the wood of the cross, in this case, the wood for the fire that he's going to be sacrificed on, carries it, and then Abraham's going to sacrifice his, his beloved son. The father sacrificing his beloved son. And in this case, he stopped, and pointed, it's pointed out to him that he's been faithful. He's been faithful to the command of the Lord, something that had to, you know, here he's been told, you're going to be the father of a great nation, you finally, in your old age, have a son. You figure things are starting to move in the right direction. And then suddenly, God says, sacrifice that son. And Abraham, you know, had to pause and say, well, how can you fulfill this promise you have of me being a father of a great nation if I sacrifice the very son that's the sign of that? But Abraham did it and was willing to do it. Willing to do it because ultimately, it's not just a matter of being obedient. To God's command, but trust in God. Absolute trust in God that he can see through this very terrible situation. And I think that's what we're invited to in being called beloved sons and daughters, being called to live this relationship with the Lord, that we're called to see how we in our situations need to open ourselves up to that trust. The trust that, that invites us not just to see a God in, in Christ and our God as one who heals, uh, brings, uh, brings life out of uh, death with uh, Lazarus, uh, feeds the, the crowds, but the God who dies for us, the God who is willing to offer his life for us, and a God who invites us to come follow him, and to have that, that trust in God, even going through death, to know that the promise is the face-to-face vision with God, and ultimately is the fulfillment of the kingdom, the kingdom he came to offer us by his passion, death, and resurrection promises us to have that same experience, to be a part of that kingdom of life and love. The apostles didn't understand what rising from the dead meant, so they, they were confused about that. They did keep quiet about this transfiguration, but Mark makes the point to say they still weren't sure what rising from the dead meant. And it wasn't until after Jesus rose and ultimately when the Holy Spirit came upon them at Pentecost that they really understood what, who Jesus was and what this kingdom was about. And suddenly it transformed them to desire to, to share that kingdom, to help others to experience the power of the Lord and all of them willing to give up their lives for that because this life is moving toward eternal life. And this life is important, not just looking to the eternal life, but this life is important because of being beloved sons and daughters, we're called to bring about that kingdom, bring about Christ's kingdom, to show the values of the gospel by our lives so that people see the face of God through us. The, the key element with Abraham is that he trusted. He trusted that, that God could even in the son being put to death could bring about God's uh, promise that he would be the father of a great nation. And he gives the same promise to us. He asks us to trust, to trust that the Lord, even in the situations we face in pandemics, in, in maybe uh, sickness and death that we face in, in our lives, conflicts, difficulties, the things that we face, do we trust that God's there? Do we trust that God will see us through? See us through ultimately to what shows more clearly the face of God to those around us 
the trust that leads us to a, a real sense that we're part of something bigger. We're part of God's kingdom. There's a story that a, a number of you probably uh, have seen, one about a, <clears throat> a fellow who fell off a cliff. And as he fell off this, this great chasm below him, he's hanging on for dear life to a, a branch and a, a ways of, from the thing, the kid, no way to pull himself up. He's hanging from a branch. He's praying to God, you know, uh, save me, you know, save me. And God says, uh, I hear your prayer and I will, I will save you. And uh, he says, okay, well, do something. He said, let go. That's trust. That God is there. God says, let go. God invites us to that trust that in our letting go, in our trusting to God's in every situation, that we indeed can bring about his kingdom. Reflect out one to God in whom we trust, as together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Now I'll extend God's love and goodness through our prayers. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all the church, that we may be strengthened in the gift of faith and may experience joy in God's abiding presence throughout our Lenten journey, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom with all the world leaders in knowing how best to roll out the coronavirus vaccine and for God's blessings upon all those suffering from the physical, emotional, and financial effects of the pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and hatred in the hearts of so many in our country and throughout the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our two parishes, that we may continue to grow toward unity and cooperation as we move forward in becoming one new parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering in body, mind, and spirit, especially for the members of our families and our parish families, that they may experience the healing, peace, and strength that they need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially for Adele Zatola, Catherine Rossi, and Phyllis Eastley, who passed away this week, and for Mary Neumeister, whom we remember at this Mass, that they may share in the fullness of joy in the heavenly kingdom, and for peace in the hearts of all those grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And loving and gracious God, we thank you for calling us as disciples of your Son. May the power of his love that unites us help us through our prayers and through our lives to bring about his kingdom. We ask all of these needs, both voice and in our hearts, in his powerful name, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. And may the sacrifice, O Lord, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told his disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the, the testimony of the law and prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty without end, we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, and we are gathered by his love. As once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send your Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was, before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, all the bishops, priests, deacons, vowed religious, the entire people that you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Make us serve, serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them a fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. And in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now with trust and confidence, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait to bless hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer a sign of his peace to those around us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and for all those at home that were unable to join us this morning and to receive the body and blood of the Lord, we will, I invite you to join me in the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. This Lenten Tuesday, we're having something each Tuesday, as, as you know from the announcement last week, uh, we're going to have an evening prayer and adoration after the 6.30 p.m. Mass on Tuesday. So we'll have the 6.30 p.m. Mass here at the Angels, uh, followed by a, uh, uh, an hour of adoration and, um, and uh, e pray evening prayer. And uh, we'll have benediction at about 10 to, 10 to 8. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please, please come and be a part hopefully maybe of the Mass and the Adoration as well. Uh, the Stations of the Cross will be prayed every Friday, just so you know, at, at, after the 11.30 Mass at St. Joe's in Bloomfield, but also here uh, after, uh, ordinarily at 6.30 p.m., but this Friday will be First Friday, so we'll be having the 6.30 p.m. Mass here in church, followed by the Stations uh, right after the 6.30 Mass. Uh, there's still a few Lenten meditation booklets in the back. If you haven't already picked one up, please do so. They're back on the, uh, as you leave. Uh, on Tuesday, March 16th, which is a couple Tuesdays from now, we're going to be having, um, uh, actually three Tuesdays from now, uh, we'll, we'll be having a, a question and answer opportunity. And so, of course, to have that, we need your questions, and we'll try to provide the answers. Uh, there's a question box in the back of church. We have it at each of our churches. Uh, and I invite you to put questions you always wanted to ask and never had a chance to, to put those in the question box. Uh, you, you might not be thinking of them right now, so we have a couple weekends to do that. So if you think of something during the week you'd like to have addressed, uh, please uh, make out a question a, a sheet and put it in the box next week. So we have two weekends to include your questions in the, in the question box. The, uh, as always, we, we need volunteers to help with the um, sanitizer of the church. So I encourage as many as possible to be able to stay. We have the materials in the back uh, right to uh, do that. And I invite whatever pew you're in to please put the kneeler down as you leave so that uh, those who are able to stay and sanitize uh, know which pews to, uh, to sanitize. Uh, any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Not seeing any hands. Any hands back there? They were all here last night. We had three last night. Okay, please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace to live our Lent.